Uh oh, sorry, my Moses is barking. <laughs> my puppy dog. Um, hi, friends. I hope that you had an excellent day yesterday. Moses is still barking at something. I'm sorry about that. Goodness gracious. Um, I still miss you guys terribly. I am learning so much fantastic information at this conference that I'm at in Jackson. Um, at least I'm assuming that I am learning that much because it is Sunday currently as I'm making this video. So I don't really know what I'm learning, but I hope it's a lot. <laughs> um, I do miss you guys though, for real. So I hope that you know that. And I hope that you have been behaving so well and that you've been completing your homework and that you are really starting to understand how to multiply in all these different ways. Now, remember, just like we did last time, we learned several different ways to multiply um, last week. And then we got to choose the way that we wanted to multiply on our test. And that's kind of how it'll be for us as well this week, too, okay? So... We're going to learn all these different ways to multiply, but when it comes down to our test, you can choose whatever way you like best, okay? So today, we're going to learn about the partial products method for using double-digit multiplication. Now, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry about that. I kind of have a cold. Um, some of you guys learned the partial products method last week. Some of us did not get to the partial products method. Okay, so if you guys need to take more time with this and really break it down, feel free to re-watch parts of the video so that you can understand where the numbers are coming from. The first thing that we need to actually do though is to read our I can statement for today. So it's very similar to what it's been earlier this week, but it's different just a little bit. So here we go. Let's read it together. One, two, three, go. I can multiply two two-digit numbers using the partial products strategy. So the different part today is that we're going to use partial products. Well, the word partial, I want you to take your pencil and box out part. Partial makes me think of part. So it's going to be part of the product, okay? A product, if you remember, is the answer to a multiplication problem, okay? So this partial products, it's going to give us part of the answer, and then we're going to have to find the final answer, okay? So let's look at our first problem here. It says, Miss Summer asked her students to solve the multiplication problem 56 times 48. Below are how two of her students solved for the product. I'm not sure that's correct English. Don't tell Miss Webster, okay? All right, so we have Miss Mary Mills' work, okay? She did the area model. So I'm gonna write that over here. Area model. Lucy did what we call the partial products model. So I want you to write partial products over here. Now, there are some things that are very similar about what they did. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is to take a minute, a couple minutes, not just a minute, several minutes, okay? And think about how Mary Mills and Lucy have similar work. What seems to be the same? They both got the same answer, just like we've talked about before. When you get the same answer, usually you do it correct. If two people get the same answer, that probably means they did it correctly, okay? So they got the same answer. So both of them worked the problem correctly. They just did it different ways. So I want you to do this. In just a minute, when you pause the video, answer the question on your paper. Okay, answer the question on your paper and then 
please take a few minutes and share with your group and then with the whole group about what you notice that's the same and different. Now, if somebody has a super awesome, fantastic idea, you need to write it down, okay? Write down their idea and write their name beside it, just like we do. So when JT says something awesome, we write JT's name beside it, and then we write down what he says, okay? And when Francisco says something awesome, we write down Francisco's name, and then we write down what Francisco said, okay? So take a few minutes to do this now. And then when you finish, come back to the video and then we can talk about some of the things that, that, you, that I hoped that you noticed. Okay, friends. So hopefully you noticed several things. So if you look over here, 2,000 is on both sides. 400 is on both sides. So is 240. So is 48. Okay, so that's something similar there. They're also both multiplying 56 times 48, right? They're just doing it a little bit differently. I'm not 100% sure what everything is that you wrote down, okay? Because I'm not there to listen to the great things that you guys had to say, but hopefully you shared those things and you recorded what people said. That was super awesome, okay? I want us to make a connection here though, with Lucy's work and Mary Mills' work. So if I broke down 56 to make it easier to multiply, I would have 50 and I would have 6. Okay, because that 5 stands for 50 and that 6 is just 6. Here, this 4 stands for 40. Okay, this 8 stands for just 8. Okay, that's the value of those numbers. Now, if you look over here, to get 2,000, Mary Mills said 50 times 40. Well, look over here. Don't I have 50 and 40? I do. So I'm going to actually start with the bottom number, and I'm going to say, well, I'm going to do 40 times 50. It's just a different way of writing what Mary Mills did. So I want you to write this on your paper so we can record what Lucy did. Okay, the next thing that Mary Mills did, okay, was she said, well, now that I did 50 times 40, I'm going to do 6 times 40. Oh, my goodness, over here, do we have an opportunity to do 40 times 6? We do, okay? So I'm going to draw an arrow to show what I've done. I did 40 times 50, and I did 40 times times 6. Okay, so let's write that down. 40 times 6. Okay, and got 240. Now, over here, the next number Mary Mills got was, five, was uh, 400. And she got that by saying 50 times 8. So now, I'm going to take a different color pencil. Okay, and I'm going to say, well look, I got 8 times 50. I can do that right there, right? 8 times 50. Okay, just write this down with your pencil. Okay, I just want you to kind of see the difference in my paper. 8 times 50. Now to get 48, she said 6 times 8. Well, for me, I'm just going to stick with that 8 number first. I'm going to say 8 times 6. Okay, so if you look, I multiplied 40 times 50 and 40 times 6. And I multiplied 8 times 50 and 8 times 6. Hey, didn't we make an observation a couple days ago uh, when we did this information about Caleb? I want you to look at this back side. We said, hey, two numbers are multiplied by the same number because 60 was multiplied by 40 and by 5. 3 was multiplied by 40 and by 5. Over here, it's the same thing. 40 is multiplied by 50 and 6. 8 is multiplied by 50 and 6. It's the same kind of thing. It's just a different way to break it down. Okay? So we're going to walk through another example like this all together for sure. Okay? So that way you can fully understand what we're doing with partial products. So I want you to look at the bottom of your page. We're going to start on this first problem. Okay? 67 times 34. So the first thing we have to do is we have to break it down. Well, I know that 67 is 60 and 7, and I know that 34 is 30 and 
four. So now I just need to, to regroup it, okay, um, and, and show how I can group these numbers together to share them all the way. So 67 times 34. Okay, I'm going to start with 30. Okay, so I'm going to say 30 times 60. Go straight up and down, right? 30 times 60. Now I'm going to say i got to group 30 with the other number that's up there, which is 7. 30 times 7. Why do you think that I don't group 30 with 4 and say 30 times 4? Hopefully, you said because 30 already goes with 4, right? They're already together. They've already been grouped together and they made 34, right? That'd be 30 plus 4, not 30 times 4. Okay, so I'm going to do 30. I did 30 with 6. I did, I mean 60, I did 30 with 7. Okay, now I'm going to go to 4. And I'm going to say, okay, now I need to do 4 with 6. But it's not just 6, it's 60. And then I'm going to do 4 with 7. 4 times 7. Okay? This is just another way for us to group our numbers so we know that we multiply. Everything on the top gets multiplied by everything on the bottom. Okay? So now we're just going to do our multiplication. So three, uh, 30 times 60. I know that 3 times 6 is 18 plus 2 zero. So I'm going to say 1 8, 0, 0. And I've got 30 times 7. Well, I know that 3 times 7 is 21 plus 1, 0. Okay, it's important to line these up, so you might have to erase sometimes. 4 times 60. Well, 4 times 6 is 24 plus 1, 0. So I'm going to write 2, 4, 0. Okay, and then lastly, I've got 4 times 7, which is 28. And you know what? All my numbers are already in order. They're already in line. I don't even have to rewrite them. I'm just going to add them up. 8, 7, 10, 11, 12. Write my 2. Carry my 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2,278. Okay. Double check to make sure that I didn't make a mistake and that you got the same answer. You know, sometimes that happens. Okay. Hopefully we got the same answer. If not, you guys can tell me um, when I get back. So now we're going to go to the next one. 78 times 29. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to break down this number. Okay, we're going to break it down. We're going to say 78 breaks down into 70 and 8. 29 breaks down into 20 and 9. Okay, it's the same thing as saying I've got 70 plus 8 over here, and I've got 20 plus 9 of down here. Okay, if you need to write it out like that, totally write it out like that. Okay, so first I'm going to say I've got 20, and I'm going to multiply it by 70. I'm going to do it over here. 20 times, uh, oops, 70. 20 times 70. Then I'm going to say I've got 20, and I'm going to multiply it by 8. 20 times 8. Okay? I've got to multiply everything on the top by everything on the bottom. 20 times 70, 20 times 8. Got it. Check. Okay? Now I've got to do the 9s. Okay? So I'm going to do 9 times 70. Next. 9 times 70. And then I'm going to do... 9 times 8. Okay, all right, take a minute, multiply these together, and then add them up, okay, and we'll see if we get the same answer. So go ahead and please pause and do this now. Okay, so you should have gotten 1,400 plus 160 plus 630 plus 72. We add all these numbers up. I get 2 there. 7 plus 
6 is 13, 14, 15, 16. Write my 6, carry my 1. So I can regroup 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Write my 2, carry my 1. So I can regroup 2 plus, I mean 1 plus 1 is 2. 2,262. You got that? I hope you will clap your hands two times with me. Okay, so now is the last problem. It's the last one on the list. And I want you to solve it by yourself using partial products. Give it your best shot. See what you can do and how far you can get. Please pause the video and do that now. Okay, so I'm going to have to rearrange my paper a little bit so we can see better. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> if we break down 45, it would be 40 and 5, or 40 plus 5. If we break down 81, it would be 80 and 1, or 80 plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to do it over here on this side. Okay, just so you can see it a little bit better this time. 45 times 81. So I'm going to do 80 times 40 first. Then I'm going to do, oops, 80 times 5. That's kind of like a Nike check sign, right? Then I'm going to do 1 times 40. And then 1 times 5. Okay, so then you should have multiplied these numbers together. So 8 times 4 is 32, and then I'm going to add two zeros. Okay, 80 times 5 is 8 times 5, which is 40. And then I'm going to add one zero, so I don't need that little part over there. Okay, one group of 40, or 1 times 40 is 40. 1 times 5 is 5. Okay, so be sure that you lined everything up. So I'm going to have 5, 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, and then I'm going to bring down my 3. So you should have gotten 3,645. If you got this correct, please clap your hands three times. Excellent. If you need to double check your work, please do so. If you guys need to watch another part of the video and try another problem like that and just start over, go ahead and do that. If not, if you're ready to move on and do some practice, um, the substitute will give you some work to do if there's any more for today. And you guys will have time to practice. I will talk to you guys later. I hope you have a great rest of the day. I love you and I miss you so much. Bye.